Hello everyone. Today in geomorphology, let's look into the interior structure of earth. Determining the composition and physical property of earth is one of the most difficult problem faced by our earth scientist. The deepest mine in the world located at Johannesburg in South Africa is only 4.8 km deep. Even the most modern rigs of oil exploration is also 10 to 12 km deep. Some information about the earth comes from the examination of rocks at a depth of 8 to 16 km through volcanoes and lava flows. However, the source of this magma is also not more than 64 km. All these are extremely insignificant while we compare the 6,371 km radius of the earth. Hence, the knowledge regarding the interior of the earth are gained through two major sources by the earth scientist. One is the artificial source and the other one is the natural source. Artificial source is gained by studying density, pressure and temperature condition. The outer crust of the earth is made up of continents that we all know. These continents are mainly composed of sedimentary rock having a density of 2.7. Below the sedimentary rocks are the igneous rock having a density of 3.5 gram per cubic centimeter. According to Newton's law of gravity, the density of earth as a whole is 5.5 gram per cubic centimeter. This means that the density is very high in the interior of the earth. The density remains low of 3.5 up to a depth of 400 km. It rises nearly to 5.6 at 2900 km deep. And again there will be a sudden increase to 9.7 up to a depth of 5000 km. Beyond a depth of 5000 km, the density further increases and it reaches to 11 to 12 gram per cubic centimeter at the core. It is assumed that the high density at the core is due to the presence of heavy metals like iron and nickel. Now looking into the pressure there is a phenomenal increase in the pressure with increase in depth. At the base of the crust, approximately at a depth of 50 km below the surface of the earth, the pressure is 13,000 times greater than the atmospheric pressure. At a depth of 2,900 km, the pressure becomes 13 lakh times greater than what we felt at the atmosphere. While moving towards the core, the pressure increases and reaches to 35 to 40 lakh times greater than the atmospheric pressure. The evidence of volcanic eruption and hot springs indicate high temperature exist in the interior of the earth. It is estimated that the temperature increases at a rate of 1 degree Celsius for every 32 meter as we step down. The rate of increase of the overlying pressure makes melting point at a higher rate, but this will have a limit to a certain degree. At a depth of 48 kilometer, the temperature reaches 2100 degrees Celsius. While we reach us to 400 kilometer depth, the temperature rises to 1500 degrees Celsius and at a depth of 700 km it reaches to 1900 degrees Celsius. At the junction of the mantle and the outer molten core the temperature reaches 3700 degrees Celsius and it reaches to 4300 degrees Celsius at the junction of the outer core and the inner solid core. Now let's look into the natural source. The study of the behavior of the seismic waves in the earth we term it as seismology. It is the scientific study 
of interpretation of the interior of earth this branch has contributed a lot to the study of interior of earth as seismic waves behave in different way in different parts of the earth we know that the seismic waves are the short waves that travel through the earth as a result of tectonic forces acting over the subterranean part of the earth there are basically three major waves identified and which we term as p or the primary waves s or the secondary waves and the l waves or the surface waves and based on these seismic waves we have gained the structure of the interior of the earth as crust mantle and core crust is the outermost layer of the earth this is the layer with the lowest density among all other layers the thickness of the crust ranges from 20 km to 50 km and this thickness is maximum over the mountains and minimum over the oceans the crust is mainly composed of two major layers the seal and the sima the upper part of the crust is composed of granite and gneiss rocks the main elements of this layer is that of silica and aluminum the thickness of seal is greater over continents and lesser over oceans the seal layer has a density of 2.7 to 2.9 g per cubic centimeter beneath the seal layer occurs a layer of dense rock which is mainly composed of silica magnesium and iron it has a density of 2.9 to 3.5 they generally appear on the surface of basaltic layers and hence this layer is termed as sima which can be also termed as crustal sima or mafic sima the continental crust of sial is less dense when compared to the oceanic crust of sima hence sial is floating over sima between the sial and the sima there is an intermediate layer of mixture of sial and sima very large areas of sial are more than 1500 million years old however no part of sima is older than 200 million years it is noted that the velocity of the p waves is approximately 6 km per second over the surface of the earth while the p waves travel through the interior of the earth there is a sudden increase in the velocity of p waves and it reaches to 7 km per second the surface of this sudden change divides the crust above from the mantle below and we term it as mohorovic discontinuity or simply mohor discontinuity this discontinuity is has been named after the yugoslavian seismologist mohorovic who discovered it in the year 1909 below the mohorovic discontinuity lies the second layer of the earth that is the mantle the mantle covers 68% of the total mass of the earth the rocks in this layer are generally denser and appears to be in the form of concentric layers or shells the density of mantle is an average is about 5.6 g per cubic centimeter and the temperature reaches to 3700 degrees celsius at a depth of 2900 km the mantle is again subdivided into the upper mantle and the lower mantle the upper mantle is of again two layers the lithosphere and the asthenosphere the lithosphere extends up to a distance of 100 km and it is divided into a number of plates below lithosphere lies layer of hot less rigid and more plastic or a semi liquid stage which we term it as asthenosphere it extends up to 700 km from the 100 km 
between the lithosphere and the asthenosphere the temperature and the pressure is very high that the rocks are mostly in a molten stage these magmaferous fluids are thick liquid layers as a result of which the plates of lithosphere can float over it the lower mantle extends from 950 km up to 2900 km the temperature reaches to 2200 degrees celsius at the end of this layer the upper mantle is separated from the lower mantle by highly dense rock and these rocks are heavier and formed as a result of heavy pressure and the discontinuity between these two layers we term it as repeti discontinuity the p waves make an abrupt drop in the velocity at 2900 km deep inside the earth making a discontinuity that separates the mantle above from the core below and we term it as gutenberg discontinuity now let's look into the innermost layer of the earth that is the core the study of the seismic waves confirmed the existence of spherical core at the center of the earth and it has provided following ideas regarding the interior of our earth the core is mainly composed of heavy metals like nickel and iron and the average density of this layer is between 11 to 12 gram per cubic centimeter the core is generally divided into two parts the inner core and the outer core between the dis gutenberg discontinuity to 4980 km the outer core behaves like liquid due to high temperature here the temperature reaches to 3700 degree celsius the inner core starts from 5120 km to 6371 km and it behaves more like a solid due to the excessive pressure from the surrounding layer between the outer core and the inner core there is a narrow transitional zone lying between 4980 to 5120 km if the earth was in a solid state entirely both the p and the s waves would have traveled in all direction that we already know about the character of the seismic waves however it was found that the region opposite to the earthquake focus will receive only the p waves and the s waves are not passing which proves that the core of the earth has a liquid stage the existence of shadow zone between 103 degree to 143 degree also supports this idea that the outer core of the earth is in a semi liquid or a liquid stage this is all about the interior structure of the earth i hope you have enjoyed the session for queries and suggestions please post in the comment box or in the google classroom i wish everyone a great day ahead thank you